here at my happy place at an airport and we drove in here and the first thing I said was there's a P-51 here this is crazy I'm here with Rachel who is the outreach coordinator of uh, the airport here but also of the airfare that's coming up so tell me a little bit about the airfare for anyone who's never been here I also say fair funny I think when I say it out loud <laughs> I love anyway, it. <laughs> thanks. so I love all these planes a Bonanza there's a Piper Navajo which won't mean anything to a lot of people but I just love being here it's such a great environment it is a fun environment which is why we try to get people out to the mm -hmm. airport to experience this so we do have our airfare event coming up that's August 12 and 13 and it's an event that's kind of expanded through the years it started back in 2020 we had a b-17 come out nice. and that's all we had people just came out we had thousands <laughs> of people just come out to see the b-17 take flights it was amazing and then every year we've expanded on that so this year we have the Tuskegee Airmen p-51 yep. there will also be a mobile theater here to uh, show movies about the Tuskegee Airmen um, we also have our pancake breakfast that weekend on Sunday the 13th and then throughout the entire weekend, we'll have vendors out here. We've got live radio. We're going to have food trucks. There'll be flights from um, a local flight school, region flyers. They'll give discovery flights as well as aerobatic flights, which oh. is extremely thrilling. I highly recommend that experience. <laughs> So. See, you're young, so you still like those motions. <laughs> um, I've done some aerobatics, and I'm like, eh, I don't want to do that anymore. I get dizzy now getting up off the couch. That's oh, I'm how the old same I'm getting. Way. Yeah, yeah. I, I get dizzy spinning one time in a computer chair, but they're really great about it. They tell you what's going to happen That's before true. it comes. Yeah, they so let you know help. you're about to puke. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it's all good and within the limits of what people want and yes. everything like that, which I love. And you talk about the pancake breakfast. Most people don't realize this that for pilots, uh, one of their biggest joys in life is finding local airports that have pancake breakfasts uh, going on. So that will also bring in a lot of a variety of airplanes because local pilots from around the area will just come on in for the breakfast too. So you never know what you're going to see. Absolutely. So the pancake breakfast typically brings in about 1,000 to 1,500 wow. people. And as long as the weather is good, we have a lot of fly-ins. So it's a fantastic event. And like you said, pilots love coming in for pancakes. Yeah. It's a good opportunity to meet other pilots and talk about aviation. And look, the great thing is, is that for the majority of pilots, their, their spouse is really tired of listening to them talking about <laughs> aviation in general, right? So yeah. when pilots get to an airport, when people show up and they want to know about stuff, the pilots like, they just come alive. They're like, I want to show you. And actually you'd be surprised how many, I know there's discovery flights from the flight schools and everything, but when you come out and get to meet pilots, you know, become part of the aviation community, there's a lot of uh, rides available in the future for you because oh, they love sharing their passion with people. Yes, they do. They love finding somebody to take up in the air. And if they find out someone's never been up in a small oh, plane yeah. or they haven't been flying in a while, they'll say, hey, I'll be here Saturday. You want to go fly? Exactly. Because, you know, we just, it's, 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 even though it's a great community, sometimes you feel isolated. You're kind of like, eh, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. So when you have younger people or other people that are interested, it's awesome. So I know this P-51, I mean, to be able to see this and see this plane right here, this is a piece of aviation history. And I think we should find out a little bit more about it. Absolutely. All right, let's do that. All right, so the main attraction at the airfare coming up is this P-51 Mustang, and I'm here with Amy. Amy, tell me about Rise Above. So Rise Above tells the story of the Tuskegee Airmen and the WASP, the Women Air Force Service Pilots during World War II. It's so important to tell their stories and say their names so that they're not forgotten. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's such a special program to be part of. Now, both of those units were set up in a way to kind of like please people to show that they were being inclusive, but actually kind of with the uh, undertone of they'll just fail. Yes, both programs were designed to fail mm -hmm. um, and just kind of be able to get people to quiet down and, yeah. and sweep it under the rug. But both programs excelled and mm -hmm. especially the Tuskegee Airmen. Yeah. Whereas by time they were escorting their bomber crews, there were bomber crews that would not fly unless they were escorted by Tuskegee Airmen. They had yeah. such a reputation of being so good at what they did, they never lost a bomber crew. Which in the movie, they portray that really well. And it's one of my favorite movies. I've watched it like a hundred times and um, I love it so much. So um, tell me about this P-51 specifically. This is a C model. So it's one of four flying C models left in the world. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, the model that the Tuskegee Airmen were flying. This hat was a trainer stateside mm -hmm. during the war. So it never went overseas. It was originally a single seat trainer. That's why it's still in one piece. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but the CAF acquired it and Don Hines was a huge part of refurbishing it, getting it airworthy again yeah. and making the 
painting it like the red tails to yeah. tell the story of the Tuskegee Airmen. It's so beautiful. I mean, it doesn't even transfer when you see it on camera, but just looking at it, it's my first time, as I said, driving in. I didn't even know it was going to be here today, and I'm just like a kid just walking up and seeing it because you're looking at aviation history, and, you know, these planes, because parts are getting harder, you know, all these things, these planes may not be around forever, you know, and it's an opportunity to really see a piece of aviation history. So can people just come and look at it? Can they sit in it? Can they ride in it? Like, what can they do? They can come and look at it. We can do ground tours. <laughs> hey, okay. Um, there, we do have a rides program. So we do sell rides, obviously, weather dependent and pilot dependent. Yeah. Um, but that's something we can give more information about yeah. during, while the exhibit is set up. Pilot dependent, so you can't, you won't let people up on their own, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, no, no, no. I'd like to go up. Um, I'm looking at it here, but now it's probably too much airplane for me to handle right now. But I just love it. I love everything about it. If people want to get information um, about um, your organization, um, where can they go to see that? Riseabove.org is our okay. website. Yep. Or redtail.org. And then obviously we're going to be here all week, so come out and see us. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for talking to us. Thank you.